In this session, we are going to discuss about rhizosphere. Rhizosphere is a thin layer of soil adhering to the root system after shaking that removes the loose soil around them. This rhizospheric soil is inhabited by the unique population of microorganism. The size depends on the root structure and also the contact area with the soil. The fibrous root structure provides large surface area when compared to the taproot system. The external surface of the roots together with the closely adhering soil particles are called as rhizoplane. Thick soil cylinder that binds to the plant roots are called as rhizosheath. Example, desert grasses. Sand grains cemented together with an extracellular mucy gel which is excreted by the root cells are known as rhizosheath in other words. Benefits This is meant for adaptation of moisture conservation and also helps in extensive root microbe interaction. It increases the nitrogen activity in the rhizospheric soil. Rhizosphere effect R by S ratio. The number of microorganisms in the rhizospheric soil by the number of corresponding microorganisms in the soil removed from the roots. The plant roots have direct influence on the composition and the density of the microbial mediated nutrients. Based on the interaction, the water uptake is taken place, production of organic chemicals to the soil, plant growth factors, microbial mediated availability of mineral nutrients, and also 100 times increase in the microbial population in the rhizosphere than in the surrounding soil. And it also depends on the particular plant and physiological maturity. For example, from the stages of seedlings to a matured plant, the microbes associated with it will also undergo a successional change. Carbohydrate exudates and mucilaginous materials from the roots helps the growth of large population of microbes. And when the plant matures, some of them get autolyzed during their normal growth. This property will provoke the growth of a particular organism, example, Pseudomonas. And later, when the plant dies, the RS ratio will also decreases. Benefits to the microbes. There is an increased proportion of gram-negative rods and decreased proportion of gram-positive and pleomorphic forms in the rhizospheric soil. And organic materials which are required for the microbes such as amino acids, keto acids, vitamins, sugars, tannins and alkaloids excrete many times. Azospirulum and acetobacter they use the root exudates from the grasses to support the nitrogen fixation. And rhizospheric bacteria, they require amino acids for their maximal growth and the plant, the rhizospheric plant will supply these acids. Benefits to the plants, increased recycling, solubilization of mineral nutrients, synthesis of vitamins, amino acids, auxins, cytokinins that stimulate the plant growth. And some microbes will act as an antagonist with the potential plant pathogens and some help in the production of antibiotics. And some microbes, they also produce organic compounds such as auxins and gibberellins like. So this increase the rate of the seed germination and the development of root hairs.
to name a few, Arthrobacter, Pseudomonas, etc. The rhizosphere of wheat seedlings will produce indole acetic acid, which is a plant growth hormone that stimulates the growth of the plant. It increases the availability of phosphate due to the solubilization of materials by the rhizospheric microorganisms. And it also makes iron and manganese available to the plant by producing iron chelating agents. Majority of the interactions in the rhizosphere mutually benefits both plant and microbes. There are some disadvantages too. Sometimes the abundant microbial population in the rhizosphere lead to deficiency of required minerals for the plants. Example, bacterial immobilization of zinc and oxidation of manganese cause little leaf of fruit trees and gray speck of oats. Sometimes the nitrogen gets limited due to immobilization, which will be unavailable for the plants. Thank you.